Okay, here we're going to be looking at a consolidation between a parent and a subsidiary company, and we're going to be using the cost method and specifically looking at year one. So let's first look at our investment account, account here in the subsidiary. And based on our distribution schedule, parent has 90% or a $270,000 investment. Now, using the cost method, our investment account here and our equity account are a aligned here for the first year. There, this investment account is in this case at 11x1 and that e uh, equals the equity account here which is also 11x1 or the beginning of the year. Now that's because the investment is maintained at its original cost and the date of alignment for the first year uh, is the same for the investment account here and the equity account. Now using this cost method means that the investment account here does not include changes here in our subsidiary equity here. And uh, later on here for later periods, uh, this cost method investment here is going to be converted to a simple equity balance at the beginning of the period and that's going to be covered in a year two cost method video. Okay, let's look at how we'd handle our income here from the subsidiary. In this case, the revenues ex exceeded expenses here by $60,000. But in using the cost method, the income here is not recorded. So there's no elimination here for the income required here. The only thing that's recorded uh, for income here is when there's a dividend declared by the subsidiary. In this case, the subsidiary declared a $20,000 dividend, and the parent is going to get subsidiary income of 90% of that for $18,000. So the balancing amount here between the dividend declared would go to the non-controlling interest here for $2,000. But what we have to do is eliminate these intercompany dividends here. So we have the subsidiary income here debited for $18,000. So we would credit the dividend declared here for $18,000 to uh, eliminate this dividend. All right, the remaining eliminations for the cost method would be the same as year one under the equity method. So going to our distribution schedule here, uh, we would have to eliminate 90% here of the uh, equity of the uh, subsidiary. So in this case, it would be 90,000 here for the uh, common stock and the retained earnings would be 126,000 here. And the total book value of the equity would be for $216,000. So looking at our entries here, uh, the common stock for the subsidiary would be debited for $90,000. And then the retained earnings here for the uh, 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 subsidiary would be debited for $126,000 and then the balancing amount here would go to reduce the investment here in the subsidiary for $216,000. Okay, next we have to handle our excess here of the fair value over the book value here. So our total amount here was for $60,000 and that was assigned to a building that increased in value by $60,000 and has a depreciation expense of $6,000 per year. So 90% uh, of that was assigned to the parent here for $54,000 and the remaining 10% goes to the non-controlling interest here for $6,000. So looking at our adjustments to our account here, we would debit or increase our building account here for $60,000 and then we would reduce or credit our investment in the subsidiary or account here by $54,000 and then the remaining amount here would go to um, the retained earnings here for the subsidiary for $6,000 or credit that for $6,000. And then the only remaining entry here would be to adjust our depreciation. So our building depreciation expense here would be debited for $6,000 and then the balancing amount here would go to uh, uh, our building account or credit that or reduce that here for $6,000. Okay, next let's look at our consolidated income statement. First looking at our subsidiary here. They had revenues of 160,000, expenses of 100,000. So looking at our income distribution schedule here, they had an internally generated net income here of $60,000. 160,000 in revenue less $100,000 in expenses. Now we also have to adjust that net income here. And we, in this case we have to subtract out $6,000 worth of depreciation 
calculation for the year. So the adjusted net income would be $54,000. So the non-controlling uh, non interest share here would be 10% of that or $5,400. So our consolidated income statement for the non-controlling interest would be recorded here at $5,400. Next looks looking at the parents uh, income here. They had revenues of 200,000, expenses here of 120,000. So uh, it, the internally generated income would be the difference here, or $80,000. And they also receive 90% here of the corporation or the subsidiary corporation's adjusted net income. And that would have been the 54,000 times 90% or $48,600. So the uh, total amount here would be the sum of the, of the 80,000 plus 48,600. So the controlling interest here would get $128,600. And that is what we'd be recording here on the consolidated income statement here for the uh, controlling interest. Okay, in summary, what I want to review here is this investment account here for the subsidiary. Now this investment here is maintained at its original cost and the date of alignment for the first year here is the same for the equity and the investment account. So we don't have to make any changes. And this cost method means that the investment account does not include any changes here for the subsidiary's equity account. Now that's re using the cost method here. But in later periods, this cost method investment here will be converted to a simple equity balance at the beginning of the period. So we have to make an adjustment here to this investment here in the subsidiary. And we do that through an equity conversion here. I'm jumping ahead here and looking at year two, really. And here we'd have the date and the amount. So the retained earnings for the subsidiary at the beginning of the year, and that's the beginning of, in this case, let's say year two here. In this case, it'll be $180,000. And then we take the retained earnings of the date of purchase. In this case, let's look at uh, year one, the beginning of year one, and it was $140,000. So we got a change here in the subs retained earnings of $40,000. And then the parent's ownership percent would be 90% in this case. And the equity conversion for the parent, their amount would be 90% of the $40,000 or $36,000. So now we would go up here and adjust here our investment in the corp, a corporation or a subsidiary, debit that for $36,000. And then the balancing amount here would go to the retained earnings for the corporation. We'd credit that for $36,000. So what I've done here is I've just jumped ahead for year two using this cost method and how we'd make our adjustments here to the investment here in the corporation or the subsidiary. Whereas year one, we didn't have to make any adjustments here because the uh, investment in the corporation here, uh, the date aligned with the equity uh, dates here for the subsidiary and the um, parent corporation.